Shortly after the Country Garden Holdings Company had hit a full-blown funding crisis, 38-year-old Huelan quietly went to the Shandong construction site where her new family home should have been living. She climbed 18 flights of stairs to a nearby rooftop and the view made her heart plummet. All she could see was idle cranes, slabs of cement with grass and mud pits all over. She was not the only one suffering. The company had already laid off about 70,000 employees when the construction workers finally went on strike after two months without pay. For more than two decades, real estate has been the growth engine behind China's unparalleled economic success story, making a full quarter of the nation's output in 2019. Global investors flooded in, pouring more than $180 billion into dollar bonds. But over the past three years, the government's campaign to control the debt-carrying sector has had drastic consequences. The property sector has shrunk by about 10%, and Chinese stocks have now erased all the gains made during a huge post-COVID reopening rally. So how did the property sector, which once was a major reason for China's economic rise, fall victim to the financing model that China has developed? China's biggest property development company, Country Garden, has been playing a major role in all this. At its peak, the developer employed 130,000 people, housed tens of thousands of families, and accumulated $240 billion in liabilities. But now the tides have changed, and it is yet to make a dollar bond interest payment that came due last week. And when a company of this size falls into distress, the pain is going to be profound and widespread. Hundreds of millions of people bought into the notion that China's property prices could only go up, hitching their careers, families, dreams, and personal finances to the sector accordingly. One of them was Huelan. She grew up in rural Shandong, living in a mud hut built by her parents, so all she wanted was a home made of concrete. At that time, home ownership was becoming a core aspiration for millions of Chinese families. And by 1998, China's property market was fully commercialized and three years later, the nation was accepted into the World Trade Organization. By 2005, its GDP had more than doubled. Construction boomed as millions of people flooded into big cities. Local governments generated revenue by selling more land to developers. Across the country, fields disappeared under brand new high-end housing complexes. And Country Garden's revenue more than quintupled in the five years from 2015, turning the company into China's most profitable developer. Even as the financial crisis took hold of the rest of the world, China's pace of urbanization skyrocketed. The debt issued by Chinese property firms was becoming one of the world's hottest trades, with bankers able to pull together multi-million dollar deals in an hour and some investors generating returns of 50% a year. When China's economy slowed in 2015, its construction focus moved to upgrading older towns and cities. Many properties were set to be demolished, but the local government offered compensation. Six country garden units, due to be completed by the end of 2023, and a rental stipend. China's economy had become heavily reliant on a real estate sector that accounted for nearly 80% of household assets by 2020. But prices had risen well beyond the means of many younger people, challenging China's campaign to reduce a persistent national wealth gap. An aging population and low birth rate also meant that China was at risk of oversupply. Banks were already tightening funding to developers in late 2020. Home sales began to slow the following year, with COVID lockdowns adding further drag. Country Garden, meanwhile, still stood strong as a household name. But in the background, a liquidity crisis was rising and on December 2021, Evergrande defaulted, along with a few other real estate firms. Global bondholders, who had provided a major source of real estate financing, were frightened by the alarming rate of distress. Eventually, the $200 billion market for real estate bonds vanished. With no banks, no investors and few buyers, even top-tier firms started running into trouble. Country Garden was one among them. Its years-long strategy of focusing on smaller cities had backfired. The third and fourth tier cities, that account for more than two-thirds of the company's revenue, are much more susceptible to pricing downturns than their larger counterparts. It shifted strategy to shrink its balance sheet. Regional managers were asked to push harder to sell units and dispose of assets, while staff who failed to meet cash targets were demoted. Chinese home prices fell the most in seven years that October. Yet the worst was still to come. This September, Country Garden's contracted sales fell by 81% compared with a year earlier. The company's sales were already dropping much faster than its competitors over the first seven months of the year. Stories like Huelan's are unfolding across China. Some have protested outside government and Country Garden offices and are now under police surveillance. Global creditors have been left in the dark and are trying to take matters into their own hands.
Some are seeking to form an ad hoc group to bolster their coalition ahead of a possible restructuring, which with $9.9 billion in dollar bonds outstanding, would be one of China's biggest ever.